I know that Don Bosco saw the poor souls in purgatory. That much is clear from his mystical dreams that I've covered on this channel, but having read one particular sermon that he gave to a parish in Castel Nuovo, I now think that he saw them far more often than just in dreams. It could merely be an oratorical trick to get people's attention for the sermon, but Don Bosco didn't play tricks. I'll let you be the judge. In any case, I'll be telling you the story of how this sermon inspired young John Caliero to join the oratory. He was destined for greatness, and later went on to become a bishop and assist the native peoples in Uruguay and Argentina. The Miracles and Prophecies of St. John Bosco, a project of America Needs Fatima. I'm your host, Matthew Miller. Subscribe for new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. At the beginning of October, Don Bosco arrived at the village of Becky for the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary, taking several of his pupils with him. The young John Caliero had been waiting impatiently for him. His companions of Castelnuovo recognized the boy as somewhat of a future leader. A bishop had come to give confirmation in the parish, and the young man admiring the cleric's vestments made himself a mitre and cope out of paper and formed a crozier from a reed. Then the boy sat upon a ladder while his companions carried him on their shoulders amid a crowd of children who applauded as the little bishop blessed them. His lively and good-spirited actions attracted the sympathies of Father Cenzano, who let him come freely to the refectory and gave him small tasks, all the more so after Don Bosco had promised to accept him in the oratory. At this point, John Caliero began to feel an affection and enthusiasm for Don Bosco. He later said, I was constantly hearing others praise Don Bosco. My mother, cousins, and friends told me that they always saw something marvelous in Don Bosco's behavior that distinguished him from his peers, and that his bearing, modesty, and gentleness revealed that he was something more than just a virtuous young priest. I knew several of his clerical disciples in Castelnuovo, and they always spoke to me of Don Bosco with reverence and praise of his goodness and virtue, that they considered him more than a model of Christian perfection. He was a model of a holy life. Dr. Alora then told me and others that in Chieri he was considered a saint. Don Cenzano, vicar of Castelnuovo, told me that he always saw something that was extraordinary in Don Bosco. His piety, joy, reserve, obedience, and humility weren't just ordinary. He was extraordinary in everything. And then, alluding to his tenacity for the good works he undertook, Cenzano told me, Don Bosco is always exceedingly generous and determined, like the saints. As soon as Caliero heard of Don Bosco's arrival, he hurried to Becky, and seeing his composed, modest demeanor, recognized that Don Bosco was adorned with many virtues. On All Saints' Day in 1851, Don Bosco arrived in Castelnuovo to give the Sermon of the Faithful Departed. Caliero was filled with so much enthusiasm that he managed to arrive a few hours before any of the other altar boys, as he longed to be chosen to accompany the preacher to the pulpit for the sermon. Seeing as he had put on his cassock long before anyone else arrived, he got his wish, and Don Bosco gave an unforgettable sermon that day. The saint said that he had passed by the cemetery on his way and heard mournful voices calling his name. He approached, and amid the crosses he saw souls coming out of their graves. One said to him, Tell my son. The other, Tell my daughter that I am in purgatory, that I have always loved her, and yet she no longer thinks of me. There were husbands, wives, sons, and friends begging for help, that others might be moved to deliver them from those atrocious torments. Don Bosco described those pitiful scenes, tender laments, memories of the past with such vividness, candor, and truth that those listening wept. The alms collected that day were abundant, about 150 liras. To those who marveled at the generous offerings that his sermons produced, he replied, To obtain charity from the people, it's necessary to make them understand that it is in their interest to give alms, so as to receive temporal benefits from the Lord, and how it's harmful to be stingy with the holy souls or with the church. Having protectors in heaven is advantageous. 
They ward off chastisements, misfortunes, storms, diseases, insects from plants, and droughts. This is the secret of inducing people to give alms. Otherwise, little or nothing is achieved. Having made his sermon, Don Bosco went down to the sacristy and, with a kind and affable air, turned to little John Caliero. It seems that you have something to tell me, to reveal some ardent desire of yours, do you not? Yes, sir, replied the young man, blushing. I want to tell you something that has been bothering me for some time. I want to go with you to Turin to continue my studies and become a priest. Well, you will come with me then, said Don Bosco. Don't worry, the pastor has already told me about you. Tell your mother to accompany you tonight to the rectory, and we will get to know one another. His mother came, and they agreed to send him to Valdoco. Such was the acceptance of another young man by Don Bosco at Castelnuovo on November 1, 1851, that leaves a fond memory in the annals of the oratory. John Caliero, whose biological father had died shortly before, now had Don Bosco as his father. Caliero had invited his friend, John Turki, who was 16, to go there as well. He would later graduate from the oratory and become a diocesan priest in Turin. Don Turki wrote of that event many years later, saying, Caliero told me so many excellent things about Don Bosco that I went to Becky to see for myself. I was struck by the sight of a priest who understood his ministry and was so affable, something I wasn't accustomed to. I conceived an indelible idea and impression of him by the loving way in which he spoke to me and other young men. I was thrilled. Having tested me on the subjects I was studying and on the state's election, he told me, I know your father and I am a good friend of his. Tell him to come to see me tomorrow. My father went and agreed that I would enter the oratory in the middle of October. I went to Valdoco to study, that marvelous place where I heard Don Bosco was doing extraordinary things, and his fame was constantly growing. I saw the evening schools he directed and other teachers, such as Father Chiaves and Mr. Geninati. On the feasts, many boys attended the church services and after the military exercises which we performed with old rifles without barrels. But above all, what struck me on entering the oratory was finding piety, which made me understand what it meant to go to confession. People there received the sacraments with frequency, not only on holy days, but also on weekdays. For the most part, we went to him for confession, although on feast days there were also other priests that would assist. So many young men approached the altar on weekdays that while he was preparing for Holy Mass, he always had someone whisper some regret or scruple to be assured that he could receive communion properly by Don Bosco. I saw in the oratory boys a firm piety that drew others to this goodness. He was most zealous that catechisms be properly given. He used to expound on ecclesiastical history in an easy, clear, and attractive way. Before finishing, he would question some of the students so that they would reason out what they had just been taught. In the evening after the lectures, he would give us such appropriate counsels that I felt a delight that I just couldn't express. Don Bosco educated the youth and led them to goodness by persuasion and gentleness. When he gave orders, he almost begged us and we would make any sacrifice to please him. I saw the oratory progress go from good to even better in the 10 years I lived there until my ordination. Having visited many institutes, I found none that exhibited such piety as that of Don Bosco, whose benevolence I always enjoyed even from afar. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you'd like to hear about how Don Bosco was a model of purity for priests, just click on the video I've put on the screen. There's some excellent advice in there for everyone. God bless you, and Our Lady keep you.